Hi there, Nate Urandi, Orion Training Systems, Team Sky back in the news, cycling the whipping boy once again, uh, justifiably, but uh, of the sporting world as far as doping is concerned. Um, certainly track and field is, is getting its own lumps, uh, Galen Rupp, Mo Farah, other distance runners and sprinters, Alberto Salazar, you name it. It's not going away. Rugby getting its lumps. What we're starting to really understand is that any sport at the top level is doped to the gills. You are not winning a world championship or national championship caliber race clean when everybody around you is doping. Don't give a shit that you've never failed a drug test. Plenty of examples of that being completely thrown out the window of credibility. Don't care that in competition testing, you come back with your certificate of approval. Just doesn't matter anymore. There's way too many loopholes, way too many ways to cheat. But what this is about is my first post-collegiate sport was triathlon. I uh, was a top amateur in the country, followed by one of the top um, U.S. pros on the Olympic distance circuit, the, at the time called the ITU World Cup circuit. I uh, was ranked top American, sixth in the world across that circuit in the mid-90s. And what I saw within my own career that I did not appreciate at the time was the proliferation of performance enhancement drugs coming through the sport. I went from winning seven races one year to within several years struggling to remain in the top 10, even though I was getting faster. And my, my naivety at the time, because that's a line I would never cross, was that it's all me. I have to work harder. I have to do more. So I started to look into the history a little bit, and I want to do this on a grander scale because what I found was quite telling. I started to look into, I, got, I became curious about, so what's the progression of winning times for something like an Ironman, which I've competed in twice uh, at Kona back in 92 and 93. And so I'm going to hold up a, a, this is with regards to Rote, Ironman Germany, as it was known at the time. And the red is the women's winning time progression year over year. And the blue is the men's. And this is from 1990 on. Now, where the first arrow is in 2000, what I, what I find notable there is the spike up. And that's about the time where there was fear that EPO could be tested for and found out. So to me, that spike up is in direct association with fear about the current way that performance enhancement was gained. The most prevalent way, I should say. Now, soon after that, for whatever reasons, a better way, microdosing, different things, Sarah, you name it, you see the spike down. And it keeps coming down. And then you see this spike back up. About 2008. What happened then? Operation Puerto. What did that do? It made a lot of athletes and a lot of sports shit their pants. Not knowing if they were going to get caught because of the way they were currently um, using performance enhancing drugs. Even if they weren't one of the Operation Puerto athletes. Um, now, I'm curious why there wasn't a commensurate spike up in the women's time. But in any case, um, maybe it's because it's a male-dominated sport at, and, and um, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to pontificate here because um, I'm probably going to be wrong. I'm not sure what this other spike is. I mean, what this other red line is here. Uh, this was just a visual I found, and I thought it painted the picture really well. But what's curious is people are going to take this, and they're going to be like, technology. Better ways to train, all those marginal gain things or, you know, whatever. It's all a bunch of crap because we're not talking about fractions of percentage points of improvement. We're talking about handfuls of percentage points of improvements, which 
within a generation, within a hundred years, doesn't occur. So the zip boomerang bike that I rode in the 90s is as fast or faster than any bike being used today, just as one example. And when you have the same aero positions on those bikes 20 years ago, 25 years ago, as you do today, and disc wheels that may be heavier back then, maybe not. Today, a bunch of those are cinder blocks. It's not about technology improvements. It's not about, um, you know, all of a sudden everybody's using power on their bike. Sure, these things make impacts, but not to this degree. It is clearly better ways to skirt the system, whether it's through TUEs, uh, different ways to avoid detection in your doping, or a combination of those and other factors that are nefarious and patently illegal. So I'll leave you with that. My goal is to come back in X amount of time after I've done a more thorough research on this. Like maybe I'll have a graph for Rote with another one for Kona and another one for a couple of 70.3s. A little harder in the Olympic distance world nowadays since the vast majority of those races are draft legal. Um, well, I... <laughs> I guess Ironmans are draft legal now too, given how they do not enforce another story. Sorry. In any case, I digress. I'm going to look into some key races where I can find the historical data and just, it'll be really curious to see how they line up. And if they all line up basically in the same sort of trend, we got a pattern and that's dangerous. So I'll leave you with that. As always, leave your comments below. Um, get back to me any way you want. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. And as always, happy training.